Hey guys and gals, Froggy here. Well, every man's got to have a chainsaw, right? I don't have, you know, acres of woodlot that I need to clear or anything uh, near that. So my first couple of choices might have been a different brand. Uh, I'll be honest with you. Steel or Husqvarna probably, probably make better chainsaws. However, comma... I do have a lot of Ryobi tools, and I've never had really any problem with Ryobi tools. Those are battery tools up there. So I thought I'd give this uh, gas-powered Ryobi chainsaw, I'd give it a chance. It's a 20-inch bar, so that's pretty good. Um, let me see. some. It's a 50cc engine. I wanted something that had the power because I do have, uh, my neighbor actually has a couple of trees that need to come down and uh, around the base of the tree is maybe as big as the top of this. They're, they're big, big damn trees. So I didn't want a 12, 14 or even a 16 inch bar. So I got a 20 inch bar. Um, it looks like this has everything except gasoline. It's two cycles, so you mix the gas and the oil. Um, I think it has some bar oil. Oh, wait a minute. Bar and chain oil. That's the replacement chain and the pitch on it. I guess I do have to buy some bar and chain oil. So, I mean, that's, that's pretty cheap. Uh, let's open it up. Here's a little more detail on it. Uh, like I said, a 50cc engine is going to give me power. The anti-vibration handle, automatic oiler. That's pretty standard on all of them. Toolless air filter is good because you do have to change the air filter or clean it at least a lot because um, of all the wood chips flying and dust and everything. The anti-vibration handle, I like that. It includes... Uh, something you add to protect your engine from ethanol. You know, everybody thinks, oh, well, ethanol is so great in your gasoline. No, not really. It's just something the government forced on us, uh, mainly because of the um, corn lobby. <laughs> Sorry, farmers. Uh, so, yeah, all your gasoline now has a certain part of it that's uh, ethanol which reduces your miles per gallon by the way. I'm not sure if the box got messed up or that maybe maybe that'll just pop back in when I open it up. It came in a in a huge box that was really too big of a box for what was inside. Uh, and this is definitely not a Pelican case, I'll tell you that. Well, let me get two hands here. Yeah, the case is okay. It's just that the inside, the saw, which is heavy, had shifted around. So it's really a, kind of a clever case. Uh, I think they call this blow mold. It's not an expensive case, but the design of it, what the heck, the design's pretty nice. And if you made a case that, you know, also, well... It really covers everything. I mean, you could throw this in the back of your truck and uh, not worry about it too much, right? There we go. There. Yeah, see, this piece had popped that way. And it comes back. <clears throat> well, I need my strong hand. You have to pull back to release the brake. Yeah. Frog is going to get a workout on his hands. All right. Let's take it out. Now I'm going to need two hands to get it out. I think probably what I would do if I ever had to transport it would be just put 
put a big old strap around there. Strap it so that it can't go anywhere. So let's let's look at this bad boy. It does have a a protective thing on the end of the bar. Hold on. So remember, these are all razor sharp. Razor sharp. So this is the protective tip on the end, which prevents you from doing a plunge cut, but it is removable. You can just unscrew it and then use it as a normal uh, saw. It's a safety feature. Um, I don't know. I, I think because of the size of what I'm going to be cutting into, I'm going to have to take that off right off to begin with. Full start. Yeah, I am going to have to get uh, some oil to mix with the gas, and then, like I said, this this goes with the oil gas mix also, and then I'm going to have to get some chain bar oil also. Uh, so I'm not going to be able to start it up for you right now, um, but. Uh, after my trip to the big box uh, hardware store, I will uh, start it up for you, probably tomorrow. Okay? Well, all right. Uh, this is going to be added to my uh, previous uh, unboxing. So we're going to start the saw up. i got a gallon here of... Uh, 91 octane. I only got 91 octane because that's what I was putting in the tank of the Corvette, so I didn't want to bother switching it to a lower octane. You do not need 91 octane. That is what the manufacturer says to mix gas to oil. This is a two-cycle motor, so you put some oil in the gas. It doesn't go in any separate thing. Uh, this came with the saw, and that will make one gallon of mix. Um, then from there forward I'll have to buy some. It's a special oil. It's not the same as motor oil. This I'm going to put in the bar to oil the bar. All I could find out about oiling the bar is in some parts of the country you've got summer weight or winter weight. But that's just plain old oil. This is automatic um, oiling. So when you rev the engine you should see a little bit of oil spit off there. If you don't see some oil spitting off there, then your oiler is not right. And we've got directions on how to start it. We've got an on-off switch. We've got a little bulb there that you pump that bulb right in the middle of your screen to prime it. Um, so, let's put in the gas and oil. Alright, so right here for the gas oil mix. Right here for the, okay, I guess that's supposed to be one of the links on the, um, the chain. So this is 32 ounces, and it's down to 20, so it took 12 ounces for the bar oil. I don't really have any way to tell how much uh, gas oil mix it took. I'm going to guess like 12 ounces again. Um, it doesn't appear to be any uh, sight tube or any way to tell how full it is. I filled it right up. So a gallon, as you know, is 128 ounces. So I should be able to fill this up like 10 times just from that one can. That's why I, that one will hold, I don't know, a gallon and a half maybe. I think it's 1.5. Yeah, 1.5 gallons, but I just measured one gallon into it. All right, let's prime it, switch it on, and uh, see what happens. I'm going to put some gloves on and some hearing protection. I've got glasses on, so that's my eye protection. Okay, let's try this thing. We're just going to start it up and see how it runs. We're not going to cut anything right now.
Okay, it started up good. Uh, it doesn't look like it's oiling the chain, so I'm going to have to check that out. Okay, um, I, my bad. I thought there would be more oil from the bar than what there is. So what the owner's manual says to do, I'm trying to focus here, please, camera. Well, I guess that's about as good as it's going to get. Check here on the safety tip. This can be removed. Uh, check for oil here. And I can see some oil. Hold on. Let me swing it around. Let's see. Oh, I'm just not having a lot of luck focusing this. Anyway, I can see oil here. And flip it up here. Sorry, rubbish truck. Okay, he's gonna make a little noise, so don't worry about it. I can see oil there. That's bar oil, that's good. So uh, I think the bar is uh, getting enough oil, then. I just honestly didn't know how much to expect. And when they say when the tip, when there's no tip on here, the chain should throw a little spray of oil off of the tip as it reverses direction. So I'll check for that when I have the tip off. Uh, right now I'm going to start it one more time and run it a little bit. Um, you have to break in a little bit. The motor and the chain will stretch a little bit. It's a brand new chain. And then I'm going to put it away until it gets a little bit cooler. And then I'll cut down my neighbor's trees. And that will be a separate video. Okay, so give me a thumbs up or like if this helps you out. Subscribe to my channel if you want more from Froggy. Be safe, have fun. I'll give you a little picture of a warm start. Okay, let's give this a, a try of a warm start. So there you go. I'll shoot you another video when I cut the tree down. I, like I said, I'm going to wait till it gets a little cooler. Okay. Bye-bye. Froggy out.